Hello. Hello, and thank you very much for attending this, this talk. I am Stefano Marzo, and I work for CERN in the Business Computing Group. And in this presentation, we are going to have, uh, we are going to see how we actually radically changed the way uh, we are calling our APIs from our React applications. So let's get started. I want to get started by giving you a little bit of context. So with my team, we actually started recently building an entire new React UI platform uh, for one of CERN's biggest business applications. And since the beginning, we knew that the backend application had the potential uh, to scale and expand actually faster than universe, as you can see here in the slide. And our backend would soon end up exposing hundreds of different endpoints that needed to be called. So uh, we needed to find a strategy to manage such amount of work. So I started asking a question around, and you would be surprised about how many people are actually doing this. So the question is, how do you make calls to your APIs? So um, as you can see in the pictures here in the slide, this is what we were doing in the past. We were opening our React application on one screen. And we were opening the Open API specification, which is the Swagger UI, on another screen. And then we were re-implementing the logic of calling our endpoints using JavaScript libraries, such as Axios. Well, that time is over, luckily since actually we wired up a very tool cool that is called Open API Generator. And what it does, it basically takes the Open API 3.0 specifications and produces a TypeScript library, which is fully implemented and ready to be used, exposing objects and functions and yeah, ready to be used to call our endpoints. And this is actually super convenient for us. And this also implies that we no longer need a second screen. But of course, with new technologies, uh, we also have new challenges to address, right? And let's have an overview of some of the main challenges we had. So the first one, is that uh, our application actually needs to call APIs from multiple uh, backends, multiple different applications. But actually, this can be solved quite easily. I can show you that, for example, this is a simplified version of the configuration that we used. And we can clearly define whether to find the input specs, which is the Open API 3.0 specifications for our service, and then define a path in which we want our generated TypeScript libraries to be after they got produced. And we can do it for multiple services, as you can see here. So these problems were solved quite easily. But there are more challenges to explain. But before I, I tell you the actual challenges, I would like you to dive a little bit with me, a bit more into the technicalities of this library, Open API Generator. And uh, I brought here to you a very simple uh, example that we can take. Um, so let me give you a rough idea of the functioning of Open API Generator. So imagine that we have a Java record called user. And you can see it has two attributes, the name and the email as strings. Well, after we give this as an input to the Open API Generator, we are going to have a, an exported interface in TypeScript, of course, which is called user. 
and declares the same attributes here, carrying the types as well. This is very important for us. Another example is that if we have a REST controller, and in this example we have one that, that is used to fetch one user by ID, we are going to end up having, in the TypeScript side, in the generated code, a new class which is called users API in this example. And within this class, we have a method. And this method is automatically wired to call our REST endpoint uh, with no effort. All right? So I hope you see it well. And I hope the text is not small, uh, so small that you cannot see it. But um, in this um, component that I put here, I, I wanted to put an example of use of uh, the generated code. So um, every time we need to call one API using an automatically generated object, we need to pass some configuration. In this case, you can see it here in the first line of code. Um, for simplicity, I just um, assume that we could get the configuration from a hook, so in a very convenient way already. Uh, after that, we have to create a new instance of this object that we can see here. And we use the new keyword, keep this in mind. And we have to pass the configuration uh, to this object, right? And right after, we can directly call the method that belongs to the class of which we just created an instance, all right? And after that, we can uh, do something with our data. But keep in mind that, for example, to prevent, um, to prevent the memory to be saturated with so many instances uh, every time this component re-renders, uh, we have to memoize this new instance, all right? And keep this in mind. So we briefly saw the code. And this, that I just explained to you, is the most, I would say, straightforward way of calling the APIs with the generated TypeScript code. Um, but do you think it's good? Or at least, do you think it's good enough? It does the job. But we can do much better. So let me summarize a little bit here. After being through the code, please keep in mind that we are creating new instances of the API objects in this case. Let's recap the challenges that I see here, OK? So first challenge. So this way of using generated code is not really handy for developers, because developers will need to fetch the configuration all the time. Developers would need to remember to create memoize instances of the API objects. And what if they forget? So of course, this approach is error prone. Second challenge, we want to allocate the smaller necessary amount of memory to call our APIs. And finally, third challenge that I see here is that, do we like to see these things in our code base? I think React developers, in general, prefer to manage such processes with hooks, right? So shall we do something about it? Uh, I would say so. As, the result, uh, as a result of our analysis, we actually push towards the development of a custom hook, which is called use API, that is working completely in synergy with Open API Generator. And it's allowing us to write smaller pieces of code in a faster way and with fewer errors. And what you see here is the result that we achieved after implementing use API. And this hook, actually, the code of this hook is omitted for, for brevity in this presentation. But, but as you can see, he hides the configuration. 
hides the memoization and leave us solely with exported types and functions ready to be called. So um, let's have a quick look at this iteration of use API. So we have three arguments you can see here. We have fn, the function that we want to call. We have args, which are the arguments that you want this function to be used to be called with. And then we have an optional backend configuration um, attributes uh, for special cases. And I would say this is already uh, a great achievement that is having a considerable impact on the way we develop our React applications in the CERN Business Computing Group as of now. But does it also help us saving some memory? Well, we performed some experiments in controlled environments, and we noticed that most used browsers uh, actually tend to allocate less memory while using the hook you can see in blue here. So um, we can actually break down this visual a little bit. Uh, and to be more precise, uh, if we consider an application that has a number of components ranging from 0 to 100, we can see that the browsers uh, pretty much allocate the same amount of memory. While, if you have more than 100 components performing uh, different calls to different APIs, the use API hook outperforms in terms of memory allocation the new instance method, all right? And another interesting case is when we uh, go above 200 components which is already, already a quite exotic case, I would say. And we, have, we see here that we have a slight increase of memory usage if we use the hook. But uh, at the time being, um, for the time being, we didn't have the resources to investigate further why this is happening. So to summarize, what did we achieve? I would say we made our users happier. We made a more optimized application, providing a better user experience and raising fewer errors from the users. We made React developers happier. We cut over red, of course. We produce uh, less error-prone code. And we need to test less code. Finally, we made our PMs happier. We go to production faster and in a safer manner, I would say. So what's the future of this project? Actually, we want to push the development of use API hook even further, and we want to distribute it as a separate library, as a next step. And basically, this way, we can have different React project benefit from it. And another thing is that we are in touch currently with the CERN's open source program office to distribute this library as an open source project, because we think this technology is a convenient solution for a real problem in software development. And with that, with that being said, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you for attending. And big thanks also to the contributor that helped uh, to, to actually code this incredibly useful hook. And these are my links if you want to reach out. And if you want to ask some questions, you will find me outside or here after. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks.